When I grew up as a child in North Carolina, my mother would say, uh, make sure you eat all the food on your plate, because other, otherwise this would be food available for starving Chinese. So the thought was China was such a poor country that people had trouble eating. Well, China was a very poor country. China was actually a very poor country up until the 1990s even. Uh, so uh, the idea of uh, China as the largest economy in the world was an unbelievable idea in 1980 or 1990, even for most people in 2000. But uh, China's rise has been the most spectacular event in the world in the last 25 years. I would say that's a great success story for the world. And as the president of the World Bank said just at the last session, over these 40 years, 800 million people who used to be very, very poor now are not poor. And some are middle class, some are even wealthy. So what a fantastic story for mankind. And what a good lesson for other countries. Uh, this bridge goes across the Charles River at Harvard between the Kennedy School and the business school. I can see it out of my office. Uh, the renovation of this bridge, the discussion about it began when I was dean of the Kennedy School, and I quit being dean in 1989. The project began in earnest in 2012. It was a two-year project. In 2014, they said the project is not finished. In 2015, they said the project is not finished. It'll take another year. In 2016, they said, we're not going to tell you when this is going to be finished. Uh, now it's almost finished. I contrast this in the book and in my presentation with the renovation of the Sanyan Bridge here in Beijing, which has got about twice as many lanes of traffic as the Anderson Bridge. How long did it take to complete the renovation of the Sanyan Bridge? 43 hours. So, in the last 10 years, the U.S. has been building a 500-mile stretch of high-speed rail between San Francisco and Los Angeles. It was supposed to be finished by 2017, and many people think the answer is never going to be finished. <laughs> so, in those 10 years, how much high-speed rail did China uh, lay down that's working today? I guess. 16,000. And before the, the 500 miles is finished in the U.S., how much more will be in China? Another 16,000, at least. So, in my book, uh, Destined for War, I have in the first chapter called The Rise of China. And I give a short version of a quiz that I give to my students at Harvard. And the question for the heading is called, When Could China Become Number One? And students guess 2030, 2040, and then I show them a second chart which says already, China is already number one. So not only rival the U.S., but surpass the U.S., including as the largest economy in the world, when measured by the best yardstick for comparing national economies, purchasing power parity. And then I'll give a little bit more details. So for me, on the tweet size, the big geopolitical event of the last 25 years has been the rise of China. Never before has a nation risen so far, so fast, on so many different dimensions. In the book, I quote uh, former Czech President Havel, who says, things have happened so fast, we haven't yet had time to be astonished. Is Thucydides' trap, which is a concept that I coined about six years ago, that's made itself rapidly into the policy mainstream. And the big question is the subtitle of my book, Destined for War Can America and China Escape Thucydides' Trap? And actually, I uh, I believe this is what 
Xi Jinping believes, when he says we need a new form of great power relations. What's wrong with the old form? I think what's wrong with the old form is that it frequently leads to war, which is not a good outcome. So we need to be imaginative, energetic, adaptive in creating some new form.